suppose start off by uh, welcome, welcoming you all to this uh, international workshop on spectroscopy and chemometrics. Um, we, I know we have a lot of uh, people from around the world, industry partners, academic partners, etc. I know we have a lot of Italian colleagues, so ciao, uh, benvenuto to all the Italian colleagues. Um, you're all very, very welcome. Um, so just briefly, I want to thank all the organizing committee um, who have done huge work in pulling this together. Uh, so Cheryl and Emer on the left and right are part of the Vista Milk operations team, and they very ably assist us, our two scientists uh, that organized this, Maria and Alejandro. So I'd just like to start off by thanking all the organizing committee for all the work that they have put into it. And I'm sure the next couple of days will be very enjoyable for everyone. In terms of, so so um, I'm just going to briefly, as a central manager, going to briefly just describe what Vista Milk is. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I suppose it's just to set the context really for for the next couple of days. So Vista Milk is a, what we would call a, a virtual center, and that it uh, there's a number of different research performing organisations involved in the center, each with expertise in different domain areas. So. Anybody that's familiar with Ireland, they're the counties of Ireland that you see coloured where we have um, various different people um, based. So Chagas Moor Park, which is down here, uh, is the host institute. So uh, that's where the director, uh, Professor Donna Berry, um, is, is, and some of the operations team are based here too as well. We also have Tyndall and ICBF, who are uh, research performing organisations. The Walton Institute, formerly TSSG. Um, we also have the Insight Center for Data Analytics uh, based in DCU, UCD, and also in NUIG. So uh, spread across, across the country. Um, in terms of why we actually exist, so I suppose there are a large number of challenges uh, that are facing both Irish agriculture and also international agriculture. These, you know, they come in the form of uh, potential uh, issues around trading, such as Brexit, um, which we have just gone through, and also issues with tariffs, for example, from, from the United States. There are issues, as we all know, around uh, climate change, uh, which is becoming obviously very uh, important. Um, food choices, and balancing food choices, et cetera. Um, and if you look at from a, from a farming perspective, you have things like calf welfare, animal welfare, uh, price volatility, etc., um, which is which is really, um, I suppose, core to what we're trying to do. So we're trying to improve, I guess, the technologies that are available um, to farmers to help them insulate them against uh, the price volatility that happens. So really, we want to be an agent for responsible growth in the Irish dairy and agri tech industry by being a world leader in, I suppose, and this is the important point, both fundamental and translational research. For, for pasture based dairying. And I think that's something that we will see a little bit of over the next number of days um, in terms of some of the work that's been done is, is, is quite fundamental, looking at the basic, the algorithms that are involved in the new predictions, but also then how do, how do they actually translate uh, out into the, the end users? Um, it's great to have all the, the, the data and to be able to do all the predictions, but ultimately there needs to be somebody that will actually use these um, at the end of the day. So look, we're looking at things like uh, increasing sustainable competitiveness. We have over 50 research, our industry partners involved with the project. So we're trying to cement and build those relationships. We are trying to address societal challenges um, and especially those in, in the form of, of climate change and, and animal welfare and health and, and, and food. And to create a new agri-tech industry populated with highly trained staff. So the center will will train over 100 PhD students and offer further, I suppose, opportunities for postdocs over the next, um, well, it's a six year center and we're just less than halfway in um, at the moment. These are our strategic goals. So we have three strategic goals based around food security, sustainability, and prosperity and societal enrichment. Um, and you can see that they're kind of further broken down into subcategories as well. So you can see that we, we do actually cover um, a huge area. We have, uh, I suppose, the guiding principles, and this is a concept of measure, predict, and act. And I suppose just to give you a, an, an example of this with, 
I suppose, relevance to the workshop is if you think about it, I myself grew up on a dairy farm. Um, and one of the things that we routinely did was to take a milk sample. So we milk recorded our cows and we took a, we took a milk sample and that was used, that went off. Um, it, uh, the the co-op uh, calculated the fat and protein and a lactation curve was applied. And ultimately the, the farmer got back a, a report like something similar to this. So the farmer was able to make a decision. We were able to see the fat and protein content of our cows and the somatic cell count, et cetera. So that was the, the act part of it. Um, and you know, I think that's that's important. Uh, again, it's just an example of, of what can be done, but also, um, and I'll come back to it in a minute, as to, to where we're actually going with this. We have, as I said, our three strategic goals, but we also have um, our research teams, which are pasture, cow and food, and really it's the linkages between these two as well. So underlying all of these are our enabling technologies, um, so, for example, the development of sensors that will help us measure. Um, our colleagues in Tyndall um, uh, are looking after this primarily. In terms of the communication, so how do we get the information from a sensor, for example, to, um, to, to a computer and to enable the decision support? So our colleagues in Walton Institute are there. We have a, an omics platform, which uh, Paul Cotter and colleagues in, in Chagas are leading. Then obviously we have the data analytics, which is very, very important. And our colleagues in, in Insight, who Alessandro um, is part of. Um, we also then have test beds, which Chagas, so, not, so we, we do need to test out all these various different technologies to see if they actually work. And then we have an integration and, and deployment um, piece. And further broken down then into that, you can see all the different areas we're, we're, we're working in. So these are called, uh, what are called our spokes. So we go all the way from soil, pasture management, nutrition, through the animal, all the way to the end product and the food. And again, you look at MIR and NIR, those technologies we're using um, in, in several parts of, of this. So if I come back to then the question and why we're actually having this workshop, um, and I suppose, again, we come back to the single milk recorded sample, you know, as I said in the past, it was your fat and your protein that, and your somatic cell count that was important. But now we can actually get a lot more from that one particular sample. And again, obviously, we have all these spectras now um, that can be uh, examined. And, and that's the key part of, of, I think, the workshop for the next couple of days is looking at, at the predictions. And then if we look at the act piece of this, we're talking of in addition to the milk composition, you're talking of gaining insights into a whole load of other traits. And I'm sure that more, more than this will be covered. Um, so again, this is again, just an example from, from the cow side and the milk side, but this actually applies to lots of other areas as well. So for example, in, in, I know in, in grass, it's something that we're looking at um, as well. So again, we're generating very large quantities of data. It's already been captured pretty much from, from the same sample, from that one individual sample. We do need new statistical tools to increase uh, the accuracy of the predictions. We will obviously need to, there will be new traits that will be predicted. And I suppose on the back of all of this, our spectroscopy and chemometrics working group kind of came together within VistaMilk. And again, it's a great example of the collaboration. This group has come together. Uh, it's a really, I suppose, um, vibrant group they they meet very regularly and out of this group this this workshop ha, has come so it's an area that's certainly increasing um in importance and i know that there's um a lot of interest in this area and i know the lads have have seen a, a lot of interest in, in that working group and uh i think that's why the next couple of days will, will be really good to to see uh the the fruits of of that so Finally, for me, just to wrap up, um, I'd like to just, this is the program for the next couple of days. So again, a big welcome to all of uh, our keynote speakers and our, our presenters and our participants who've uh, put in time into preparing presentations and posters, et cetera. Um, there's the, I suppose the, the masterclass or the, the main um, invited talks are on today. And then there's a workshop tomorrow based on, on the data that would have been sent out. So with that, I'm going to wish you uh, all the best for the next couple of days and hope you're really enjoying it. I know I'm certainly looking forward to, to hearing a lot of the talks over the next couple of days. Thank you.